Hi everyone, my name is Joanna. Thanks for checking out my channel. If you've seen any other videos in this series, you'll know that I've started to budget for Christmas well in advance. This has helped us so much because we're not stressing out in December, putting things on credit cards, and then waiting for those dreaded January bills to roll around. Planning ahead has been great, and I wanna encourage you that if you haven't tried this before, to try it right now. Before we get started, you're going to need something to record your budget on. Now last year, if you saw, I shared our budget on here and I just used a good old fashioned pen and paper. So if you prefer writing things out, go grab that piece of paper that you've got lying around the house. It can be that easy. Now if you wanna get a little fancier, I have a couple other ideas for you. I've been searching for an app to um, kind of keep my budget on and I think I found one that I like been using it this year and so far so good. It's called the Christmas List app and I'll put a little picture up here if you want to check it out. It was free and it's just a place you can record your budget. You can break it down into categories, put different people's names or different items you're looking for and then it will track your spending which is a really good idea. Of course if you want to be even fancier you could do an Excel spreadsheet. These are great because it's done and you can just tweak it a little bit each year. Whatever the method is, grab it and we're going to get this budgeting done right now. If you're interested in any other videos in this series, I will link those below. Last year I posted a video with our actual budget, so if you're curious or just want a specific example, you can check that out. I also have a video on how we save for Christmas, which has been a game changer because it has just alleviated so much stress that incurs around the holidays. Okay, so we're gonna break our budget down into different categories and you're gonna fill it out according to what works for you and your family. If you have a spouse or someone that you budget with, it's a great thing to sit down and do together or kind of make a rough draft and then go ahead and run it by them and then settle on your final numbers. So we are gonna start with the presents or gifts category. Now, I've said this before, but the reason that I like to start with this category is not because I think they're the most important, but I do think they can cause the most stress. There's a lot of kind of obligation that we feel around this time of year to spend a lot of money on gift giving. Now, as we're making decisions in this category, what I want you to think about is what can I afford? This category, I think, causes a lot of stress because we feel obligated to spend money based on what other people do. So we're not trying to match, you know, what Aunt Susie spends every year on our kids, or we're not going to compete with our siblings to see who can, you know, spend the most money on our parents. It's not about that. It's about finding a number that works for you and your family, something that you feel comfortable spending and something that you know you can pay for ahead of time. So we're gonna list out the people that we spend money on at Christmas time. So we're gonna get a list going of all the people we buy presents for at Christmas time, and we're going to assign them a realistic amount. I will chat a little bit later as we go through this list on a way that you can have some of these conversations with family, because these can be awkward. If there's an expectation to spend a certain amount of money because that's what you've always done, there's ways that you can talk to your family about that or talk to your friends, whoever it is, and find something that's gonna work for you. Okay, so we're going to start our budget with uh, my husband and I. So we buy each other gifts at Christmas. The first two people we're going to put on the list is ourselves. And again, not because we're being selfish, but we're going to start with immediate family first. So whoever you live with, anyone that you buy gifts for, let's focus on them first. So for us, that's my husband and myself. If you want to check again on our budget last year, I'm going to list the amounts that we spend. I'm not going to focus as much on that in this video, but I'll give you a rough idea of what we're doing this year. So my husband and I, we are on a very strict budget throughout the year because we are really working on paying off debt. At Christmas time, we do try and allow each other to spend a little bit of money because we don't really allow ourselves to buy a ton of extra things throughout the year. So I think previous years we've done about $200 each. We are gonna bring it down to about 150 because there's a few people who have joined our family this year, which is really exciting. And I'll talk about that later, but our budget is going to adjust accordingly. And of course we are only gonna spend how much we can afford. 
Next is kids. If you have any kids that you are buying presents for, think of an amount that works for them. Now for us, we have an, oh my goodness, he's gonna be a year old at Christmas. He's at Christmas time. He's gonna, yeah, that's crazy. Um, so we'll have a one year old this Christmas. Yeah. Now remember for a one year old, even two, three year old, they don't know a whole lot about what's going on. I don't think my, my son's gonna even understand the concept of getting a gift. I think it's gonna be fun to, you know, help him rip uh, wrapping paper, but I think that's about as far as he's gonna understand. <laughs> So we're going to set a small budget for him this year. We're going to spend about $30 on our son, and that is probably going to change as he grows up, but we're always going to make sure we set that amount ahead of time and try our best to stick to it. If you want an example of some gift ideas for a younger child, my best friend and I did a video last year, and she has some great tips on how to really keep to that budget. She's got a little rule that she goes by and I totally encourage you to check that out. So however many kids you have, make sure you put them, write them on the list, on the app, the Excel sheet, whatever you're doing, make sure you record each one of them. Now you can always come back to this later and if you find that once you get the total amount for your budget, it's too much money, you can come back and either take away from this budget or if you're finding you have a little bit extra, you can come and add to it. So we're working kind of at an, on a draft right now, but do try and be realistic about things you can actually afford. Okay, so we've got our immediate family done and we're gonna move on to extended family. Again, this is gonna be different for everyone as some families do gifts, some families don't, but we're going to make sure we record any extended family right now. Okay, so how we do it in our family, we've got my side of the family and my husband's side of the family. On my husband's side of the family, we are growing. There are three in-laws now, so there's seven siblings in total, four originals, three in-laws. So between the seven of us, we actually draw names and we buy one present for one of those people. So between the seven of us, my husband and I are each responsible for buying gifts for one sibling. Now, in previous years, we've spent about $50 per person. So that means my husband and I are spending $100 on siblings on his side of the family. Now, this year we're discussing lowering that. And I think that there's ways you can have those conversations with your families. So it's really can be as simple as just telling your family, listen, we are working on our budget this year and this is how much money we are going to spend on this these family gifts. Or you can say, hey, you know, can we talk about lowering the budget a little bit this year? For the most part, um, when we have brought this up to either side of our family, it has just gone really well. People are understanding. And remember, even if they aren't, you need to make sure that you are sticking to your budget because you don't need to add more stress to your life and you need to be comfortable with how much money you're spending. Okay, so on my husband's side of the family, we have both of his parents. So we're gonna write those their names down and the amounts that we've agreed upon to spend for them. Then we actually have three cousins on that side of the family, including my son. Um, so there, he has two little girl cousins, which is really exciting. They're all within six months, up, like they're all six months apart. So um, they'll you know be able to grow up together. But even talking to um, like our as we've been talking about what to do for the kids, because this is really our first year with kids on my husband's side of the family, we've all really decided we're going to spend a small amount on them, especially because they don't really know what's going on. My son will be a year old and the other two cousins will be younger than that. And um, we're just each gonna spend about $10 on cousins. Now this might look different if you have older cousins, but there are ways that you can um, make it more affordable. Do a gift exchange, do the gift exchange game, or just set a lower budget and just be honest. This is how much money we're able to spend on cousin gifts this year. You can do it and you will thank yourself at the end of January when you're not, you know, dreading 
those bills coming in. Okay, let's do our other side of the family. And if you have got two families, you can continue recording your budget. Now for my side of the family, my husband and I are the only ones married. So I have two other siblings, but my sister has a boyfriend who will be buying the gift for this year. So that is five siblings on that side of the family. And right now we are still buying gifts for each person. Now this is probably gonna change and this will probably be a conversation that um, my husband and I will bring up a year or two from now as we're adding people to the family because again we want to do something that's affordable not only for us but I do think other people appreciate it too so right now we are spending about forty dollars each per person on that side of the family it used to be 50 but we have decided as a family to lower it because we are starting to add more people and again we will adjust that as the years go by and now I've already told my family that there's no pressure to buy him gifts. My, my side of the family and well, both sides of our family do love gift giving, but I never want anyone to feel obligated to do that. I've also said, if you'd like to get him something, you know, he's still very little, something small will be perfect. He will be very happy and just being around everybody it will be exciting for him because it'll be something different. So we've set that up with our family and then we have my mom who we buy presents uh, for as well. And we spend um, between 40 and $50 on her, just kind of like we do on my siblings. Okay, I know that was a lot, but we're getting some of the big things out of the way. Now we're gonna think of anyone else that we buy gifts for. Do you have some friends that you like to do gifts for? I would encourage you, if you do friends gifts, to think about doing family gifts. If they you know, have a few kids in the family, it's gonna get expensive trying to buy separate presents for each kid. Think of something you can gift the whole family. Maybe it's a gift card to a restaurant or tickets to a zoo or a family board game, something that they can all do together. If you're likely going to be able to save money just buying one gift for an entire family instead of trying to find a gift for every single person. So we have a couple friends that we like to buy gifts for and we are gonna buy family gifts for those families. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we add anybody else to the list that we buy gifts for. Do you buy gifts for the mailman? Do you buy gifts for your teacher? Do you buy gifts for, um, I don't know, people at church or people in a community group you belong to? Anything like that, make sure it goes on the list. We often go to a eggnog party that our friends host and we play a gift exchange game and we typically bring $20 gifts to this game. So we're gonna make sure we include that on this list so that we don't forget about things like that. So any parties you attend that require gifts or gifts that you're giving to um, you know, the kids gymnastic teacher or the hockey coach, make sure that they get written down and that you decide on a price about of money that you decide on how much money you're gonna spend Whew, okay that was a lot we got the presents over with we're gonna keep going i promise you this is gonna get easier and i think we're gonna fly through the other categories a little bit faster next category is food now this is going to be very different depending on whether you host a meal or whether you kind of you know attend a meal for us we typically go to both of our families at some point over the holidays so we are often bringing some um, food to our family's house now if you are hosting don't be afraid to ask everyone to bring something maybe you're going to you know, if you do the traditional turkey, you're gonna price out how much a turkey costs um, approximately. Think about how much you spent last year and you're gonna be in charge of buying the turkey. You can absolutely assign all the sides, the drinks, the desserts to other people in your family so that you are making sure that you can afford, um, that this meal is affordable for you. So think about, are you contributing to a meal? How much do you usually spend? And decide on a realistic amount. Now, this can also be an area where we overspend because there's so many, you know, Christmassy treat themed treats that are out there that, oh, you know, I should have a bowl of candy or that special ice cream that only comes out once a year. All these little things can add up. So do your best to pick a budget that is realistic and affordable for you and something that you can stick to. 
Okay, the next category we're gonna talk about is decorations. Now this is my favorite category. It's hard because we're not spending a whole lot in this category at the moment, but I would love to do that and, and you know grow this category in the future. When you think about decorations, do you have a Christmas tree? For us, we actually got rid of our Christmas tree last year. This year, we've put $30 in our budget to buy a Christmas tree. Now, this will either be a new Christmas tree, or not a new Christmas tree, a real Christmas tree, or we're gonna buy something on Facebook Marketplace, a used Christmas tree, and this is the amount of money we're gonna spend. Need anything from a Christmas tree to Christmas tree decorations. Maybe you put lights out in front of your house, all of these things I want you to think about for Christmas. Remember, you likely have a lot of decorations, so maybe do a little quick inventory of what you actually have. But if you like to add things to your collection every year, then add, then put that in the budget. Give yourself a realistic number of, you know, maybe a few new ornaments you want to add. Um, you want to go with a different color scheme this year, buy a new set of, you know, those bulb, bulbs cases, whatever it is. Um, be realistic and write that down in your budget. Now here we also include things like wrapping paper, tape, um, Christmas bags, things to um, you know wrap our presents in. Again, take inventory, see how much you actually have because I don't know about you, but we have lots of wrapping paper from last year. We actually typically get the brown wrapping paper. I'll put a picture of it up here. Craft paper, there we go. Couldn't remember the name last year either, but we get craft paper and then we just decorate it with like a pretty ribbon or sometimes I'll stamp it if I'm feeling super creative, but that's a very affordable and I think pretty way to wrap your paper, your uh, presents. <laughs> there we go. So think about uh, things like wrapping paper, Christmas decorations. Let's give ourselves a realistic amount that we can spend on this area of the budget. Okay, we're, we're moving along after we got through presents. I told you, we're gonna keep this going. <laughs> okay, next thing is travel. Now, again, this could be completely different based on where you're going. Are you flying somewhere for Christmas? I know people often do that and it's really important to plan ahead for that. How much money are you gonna spend on those plane tickets? Are you staying somewhere at a hotel? Or are you staying with family? How much is that gonna cost you? For us, we are thankful that we live within driving distance of both our families, but we're gonna put the cost of gas on our budget because this is separate from our regular gas budget um, that we do on a monthly or a month to month basis. These are kind of extra trips that we do around the holidays. So we're gonna put down the price of gas for my to get to my husband's family and to get to my family. So think about your travel costs. Are you paying for gas? Are you paying for flights? Are you paying for hotels? Whatever that is, maybe car rentals. Um, think about that and make sure you write that down. That's an important area to not forget about in your budget. Speaking of areas to forget about, a category that I forgot about last year is Christmas photos. Now this is a, a specific thing. I know that not everybody does it, but if you like to send out, you know, a family newsletter or a family Christmas photo once a year, it's important to get this on your budget. Thank you to my sister-in-law who reminded me about this last year, and I promised myself I wouldn't forget it this year. We get eight family photos taken. We've just started the last couple years. And now that we have um, a son, it's just something that is really important to me to document every year. A little side tip here, a lot of photographers will do what's called mini photo sessions. This means that you are with them for a shorter amount of time. It might be 10, 20, 30 minutes instead of a longer photo shoot. But if you're looking to get photos for a Christmas card, you really only need a couple good photos of the family. So check out the photographers in your area and see if they offer mini photo shoots and you can save a lot of money just by doing a shorter amount of time with them. Okay, now don't forget about the cost of actually printing the photos and mailing them. To tally that up and give yourself a realistic total of how much that is gonna cost. We print our pictures at Costco. That's a really affordable place that we found um, works well for us and they print them within, um, I think we got them within a week last year, which was great. 
Um, but yeah, check out Walmart. I know does them staples. Look for the cheapest place that you can find if this is something you want to put in your budget. Okay, last but certainly not least is giving. Now this is a category that we've added in the last few years and it's really wonderful if it's something you can add to your budget. This can be making a small donation to a local charity. This could be giving to a specific family or friends that you know are of a need because we all know that there's a lot of extra expenses around this time of year. Of course, if you can, I encourage you to give throughout the year, but Christmas can be a special time to do that. Think of if your church is doing a specific um, fundraiser or if there is something in your community you can give to. Maybe there's an organization that's really special to you and your family, and this can become part of your Christmas budget and something special you do every single year. Okay, high five. I think we did it. Hopefully you have gotten everything written down that you need to. Of course, if there's another category that I don't haven't mentioned and that is important for your family, please write it down. If you haven't showed this to your spouse or whoever you budget with, run this by them. Make sure that this is something realistic that's gonna work for your family. Okay, now you're gonna total everything up. I encourage you to, to do it by category first and then come up with a total for the amount of money that you're gonna spend on Christmas. Now, this amount could be surprising if you haven't done this before, but once you see the total amount, is I want you to be honest with yourself. Is this an amount of money that I know I will have before Christmas? Don't count on that last paycheck before Christmas if you can help it. Can I save this amount of money up before Christmas and pay for everything that I have written down on this list? If you find that you can't, that is okay. That's the beauty of a budget. We're gonna make it work for you and for your family. So let's see where do we need to tweak things. I would encourage you look in the present section because often we overspend there. Is there places that we can um, you know, reduce the amount of money we're spending on certain people? Can we combine some gifts, maybe do a family gift or Think of some creative, smaller gift ideas that we can give to reduce our, our um, budget. If you're like me, we often go lower in the decorations category because it's not that necessary. Though I love it and would love to increase it, it's an area that I know we can lower if needed. So look at your categories. Where can you, where can you save money? Now, if you are in this um, exciting position of thinking, hey, I actually do have a little bit more money. This is where you can go back and say, okay, where can I actually add? Can I put more in my giving section? Can I donate more money this year? Maybe I can spring for a fancier hotel for my family. Whatever that is, however much money you have down here, I want you to make sure that it works for you and your family. I promise that it does get easier and it will help you Ha enjoy Christmas more. You're not going to be focused on, you know, the financial stress that does come with Christmas. Let's acknowledge it because it's there, but we can plan ahead and make this way easier. Okay. On a personal note, I am not someone who's naturally good at budgeting. It's something that I have to work on. My husband and I had to work through this when we got married because neither one of us really knew what we were doing but it has helped um, us so much to do this together and it has honestly changed how much more enjoyable the holidays are for us. Whatever time of the year you're watching this is a great time to sit down and do your budget. If it's January, hey, why not go ahead and do it while Christmas is fresh in your mind? So whatever day it is for you, I hope that you are having a great day. If you are in the holiday season, I hope that is wonderful. And I do hope that this helps you out and makes a change for the better this year. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me as we budget together. I will see you in my next video. Bye.